welcome. We are live with Adobe and the one and only Evan Abrams. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, well. Thanks for saying that I'm the only one. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let us know in the chat where you're co coming in from. Uh, this is going to be exciting. We're going to be working on some fun graphics today for a, a YouTube show based on food, which I think most people like. Yeah. So we're going to be needing some input from you for sure. Everybody's got to um, eat. <laughs> that's right. But yeah, we're just going to have a good time. We're going to have some giveaways. You're going to have a chance to win one of these guys right here, as well as a Creative Cloud subscription. Uh, and we're going to be doing that, that uh, Creative Cloud subscription actually through a challenge that we're going to ask you all to participate in. It's very easy. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, we're going to have you download a transition template that is free that you can modify and add to. And eventually, we're going to review your submissions you can just upload them so we can view it. Yep. Take a little, uh, a little bit of a critique time, possibly see what uh, comes in, and you might win a year of Creative Cloud, which is a very, very nice prize. Yeah, that can be a game changer for a lot of people because you know there's a lot you can make in a year. There's a lot you can progress in a year. There's, uh, yeah, there's no end to your creativity. <laughs> That's right. So. Yeah, and so yesterday uh, we were in sw swapped roles. I was behind the computer. Evan was kind of leading you guys through what I was making. Today we're going to swap and uh, see how that goes. I think we're going to have a good time. Oh, yeah. And let's see who, where we've got uh, people coming in from. We've got, uh, well, I don't see any locations. Everybody's just saying hi. Hi, everybody. So <laughs> glad that you're here. Thank you for yeah, tuning yeah. in once again. Yeah, but, let, uh, us know, let us know where you're from. Let us yep. know what you do. And yeah. if you ever have any questions while we're doing stuff, then, uh, you know, pose me in there. Jake will Absolutely. reference him to me, or he'll answer them himself because I'm very yeah. busy. Yeah. But <laughs> It'll be a, a good time. So, yeah. Uh, Evan, why don't you tell us a little bit about this show that we're going to be, that you're going to be making some graphics for? For sure. So, uh, we, were, we were thinking about, well, what are we going to do that's nice and short and pithy and, and, you know, it's themed around a lot of social sharing, a lot of YouTube programs. So, we're like, you know what? You know, yesterday, Jake showed you some titles for maybe a travel photographer blogger. Well, today I'm going to show you some very quick titles that can be repurposed on YouTube, that can be repurposed on Instagram, that can be used in all these lovely places uh, for a short cooking program. Uh, the focus is on small, shareable plates. You know, it's, it's like tapas. It's uh, small, sm small plates, high prices. That's what I always <laughs> say. But uh, yeah, we'll be uh, doing, however, the, the idea is that we're going to be reducing things to their essential components. So just like in cooking, you kind of want to sometimes reduce things to their essential ingredients. When you have great ingredients, it's great food. So the theme for the intro is about reducing things to their barest components, the essential things. So we might as well uh, watch the, th the type of thing we're going to be making. Yeah. This is like a little comp we put together. Render, 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 rendering super hard. You kind of. Uh, Why am I rendering? What's that? Why am I rendering? We can just, <laughs> we can just play the video oh, here we go. Pre that, I, that I rendered already, so we can just do that. So, here we've got some things coming up, and then a giant pattern of things. You know, the idea of make once, share many, you know? And, uh, you know, just for this comp, I called it the overshare, but I'd love to know what title you guys think. Uh, we should be using for the program. Yeah, so definitely give us some comments on, on what you think we should call this. And we're also going to be looking for the type of food that, that you think would be a good uh, animation for Evan to make. That's right. So in this case, we have, uh, you know, like an olive and gouda on a cracker, which, you know, I, I don't... I don't cook a lot, I'll be honest. I don't know if this is a good flavor combination. Um, but uh, perhaps it is. But we'd love to know uh, sort of a food that uh, that you like to share with people. Tell us what that is, and we'll try to make that. The idea is that if this were for a YouTube program, perhaps every intro could be made anew. If we can bang one out in an hour, that's pretty good time, right? If you can create an intro that works within an hour, that, that works for social sharing. Absolutely. You know? um, if it takes you two hours, you're on the fence. If it takes you three hours, what are you doing? Get out of here. <laughs> like, if you're going to be remaking stuff all the time on a social release schedule, it doesn't really work because you need to put your hours into making content and moving stuff around. And mm. So it's it's good. So yeah, just let us know uh, foods and uh, we'll we'll pick something and start the process. Yeah. Um, We've got some people saying pizza. That's always a popular one. Spaghetti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, people are feeling the pizzas. Spaghetti, interesting. Spaghetti, not really a small plate, though. You not know, really, yeah. Well, think, of, think about like a napkin. Yeah, something what's something you're going to have the palm in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> a little cracker and some cheese whiz. Yeah, exactly. So something along that. Like, Broccoli. 
Like, okay, broccoli. Broccoli's good. Mm -hmm. uh, something like a sushi. Sushi is nice, sushi. right? That's a good thing. Sushi is also very graphically uh, appealing to look at. Yeah, let's talk about the, the graphic element of this, because you're talking about reducing things to their simplest forms, so the, the minimalist style of graphics, that it's a very trendy look for motion graphics yeah. currently, so, so and I might, think that uh, lends itself to this. Oh yeah, and you might notice that there are a lot of things that are simple geometry, mm -hmm. elaborate textures, and then right. some gradients on it. So we're we're conveying things in their simplest forms. Ah, bris, bruschetta, bruschetta. You know what? <laughs> Correct me on the pronunciation uh, later, uh, which I do get corrected every time I'm in a restaurant. Mm. Have you know, I said it both ways. I've been corrected both ways. Wow, um, <laughs> that's right. No, oh, sir. fortune cookie could be fun. Okay, yeah, you fortune have, cookies, having things folding around. I like the the fortune cookies. Maybe you could. I mean. Evan is going to be animating today, so I'm not going to I'm not going to direct him too much. Listen, but, you're, uh, you're, the, you're the client. We'll see. Yeah, I, I guess I should should have said I am going to kind of take the role of the client. <laughs> so I'm going to be bossing Evan around a little. I'm going to let you guys weigh in on that. So if you do have any, you know, <laughs> client, if you want to play the role of the client today, feel free yes. to chime in. This is going to be design by community. This <laughs> yes, is uh, crowdsourced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the same way that they say a camel is a horse designed by committee. That's what we'll be creating today. The camel of motion. Oh, caviar. People are digging some caviar. caviar. That's fun, because caviar is kind of like these... Um, what we should do, actually, is we should be doing some of the research sure. process. Sure, And maybe uh, talk a little bit about how we arrived at this particular look, you know? Because there were, there were other ideas that were thrown out along the way. Let me see if I can call up some of them. Mm -hmm -hmm. Where are some of these things? Yeah, there was an idea of small plates kind of refining our gradient look how that might look with some texture in it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of a lot of steps that eventually get us where we're gonna be. Uh, here's a sausage. All right. When I was thinking about, you know, well maybe, when I was thinking about the process here, what are we showing in the intro? That was one of the first ideas that we were uh, trying to get to, is like, what can we really communicate in the time we have? Let's say we have five seconds. Mm -hmm. That's a good amount of time. That's a very short amount of time, but you can say a lot in there. and. In five seconds, we could show maybe some processing of ingredients. Sure. You see, like, chop, 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 chop. Like, wouldn't that be a nice thing? Like, sure. oh, here's the thing. Chop, 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 chop. Um, and then titles, and then assembly. That could right. be a thing, right? Because yeah. when we're, I'm very expressive when I'm trying to think about no, things we're got to be <laughs> together. I'm always imagining, like, what kind of noises would it be making, and, and how would you be experiencing? What would the pacing be like? So that was the first idea. Okay. Yep. We showed some pieces, and then we processed them. So this was like a like a snossage falling down here and like wobbling into place, um, which is, which I determined was kind of gross. Um, <laughs> like, because when you look at it, like, okay, it is kind of a fun, kind of Ren and Stimpy looking thing. Sure. I don't want to eat it. <laughs> like like, this is not making me hungry. Not appetizing. No, when I think about it, like, it's too, uh, too grotesque. Too, yeah, well, the textures might be a little strong for... Exactly. Yeah. So. You can make ideas, and you can throw them away. We throw sure. this idea away. So I'm like, eh, that's not really, really what we're into. And then I was like, well, well, maybe a line style is more in line with what we want. <laughs> maybe we want, you know, something with with some fine lines. And then, well, well, how would we animate that kind of flooping around, that kind of thing? And we arrived at this like this flooping, um, which you know, the highly technical flooping terms. Um, <laughs> It's Canadian term, maybe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, flooping is a <laughs> Canadian term when you floop. Um, and, you know, it was like, okay, well, we could design assets this way. But when I was looking at it, I was still thinking, this is not essential enough, you know? Mm -hmm. This is still complex. It's still, um, you know, we know it's Swiss cheese because it essentially has the hole. That's how you know a rectangle of cheese is a Swiss cheese because it has a hole in it. Sure, right. Which is okay, I suppose, but... You know, then we have this three-quarter kind of angle. We got this isometric mm -hmm. angle. I'm like, ah, that's smart. That's too technological. Right. Right. I was like, if this were about the science of food, if this were, you know, cooking with nerd, you know, that would be the sort of thing I would want to be like video gamey. And it's not, it's not cooking with IKEA. It's not yeah. assembling an IKEA yeah. diagram. Like, no, no, we're missing something. The lack of texture bothered me. So I was like, you know sure. what? This is not the direction uh, that we want to go. So we eventually ended up with this kind of a thing where I was thinking, okay, well, what if we just take our ingredients, we take them down to the, the basic things, um, their basic shapes, basic ideas, basic flavors, and we simplify. I'm always saying, words that always come out of my mouth, that we're gonna simplify and not simulate the thing. 
I'm going to simplify. We're going to represent the thing. <laughs> oh, yes, people do not like <laughs> olives. Apparently in this not. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little salty, uh, salty, pickled, uh, you know. I've never eaten a raw olive. I couldn't tell you if that's better. Um, I couldn't either. I've only I ever have, been I brined. No experience. <laughs> Well, we're going to go down the street, we're going to go to an olive tree, we're going to eat them, we're going to have an experience. Yeah. But yeah, so what do we have coming up here? What, what are people saying yeah, in the chat? I mean, what did, how did you feel about the, uh, the caviar? Okay. We do could you do, think that's a good, a good option? I think it's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. We might burn through a couple of them, but let's sure. start. Yeah, that, so I mean, everything that you just walked us through is really great to, to think about because it shows that there's a process. I mean, you, you, you don't very often just go with your first idea and see it through to completion and end up with something that you like. Correct. Or something that's gonna work. Uh, you know, Evan just shared his entire thought process behind how he got to the graphic style of what you just saw and, you know, it was very, uh, like, intentionally thinking about what your graphic style was representing and how it was going to fit with the topic of this show. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it is, it, it's a process and it's something that you need to be putting thought into to arrive at something that's going to be appropriate for whatever you're working on. Exactly. And some of the ideas that should probably inform your process are who is going to be watching? Mm -hmm. Who's watching this program? You know? Yeah, who's what, our audience? What appeals to those people? You know, if, if we were targeting like an older demographic, if this were a sort of like seniors cooking program, it would look very different oh, yes. than if it were a child's cooking program. Right, those are the two extremes. Yeah. Um, they both sometimes wear diapers, so there's a lot of overlap. <laughs> there are a lot of things that are similar between the very old. They generally have middle-aged people looking after them all the time. Um, but you know, beyond that, the things that appeal to the two of them are very different. Yeah. Well, they do both like hard candy, so <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I'm not an old yet, so <laughs> I don't know what old people like. But. Investing the time to understand who you intend to watch it. Right. Right? It's a very important aspect of the whole process. Especially if you're making something that's intended to be seen or intended to have an effect on someone. Mm -hmm. I want the audience to feel this way. You can't do anything about that if you don't know who that audience is. Because you, you could be talking to anyone, which means you're really talking to no one. So you have to make sure that you're communicating, that you're understanding the audience in mm -hmm. some way. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, let's let's get into this caviar. Yeah, uh, what would be your first your first step of finding mm -hmm. your turning a caviar yeah. into something that fits this stuff? That's right. So we want to have things falling, things uh, bouncing. We want to think about how we can put the stuff into motion. But first, we have to look at what the stuff is. So a quick Google image search will render you a lot of images of caviars. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's there's another place you might go to have a look at some things. If we uh, crack open the libraries. Oh. Um, this is a spot that I sometimes do. I really don't like opening a web, web browser when I'm working. <laughs> okay. I'll be honest with you. And it's going to get a little anecdotal, but when you open up a web browser, then you start to think like, oh, maybe, then maybe I'll check my email. Maybe I'll check my tweets. Maybe I'll do these things. We're not going to do those things today because we have to do, we're here to do work. We're here to do concentrated labor and focus. Yes. You start, get, start tracking yourself with all this stuff, you know? Put your phone on silent, put it away, yeah. stay within the app, and hey, why don't we just search uh, Adobe stock here, we'll search it up for caviar, and we're going to see what results come up from the Adobe stock, and brrr, here's a bunch of... You're not alone, Nathan also does the same thing. Mm, I might have to take a tip from you guys, <laughs> I've never thought to even use that as my, my research tool. Well, the one thing that's interesting, you'll notice... Look at the quality and so sort of the editorialness of mm -hmm. a lot of these. We're seeing them, we're seeing the object alone. That's what I was looking for right here. Ah. How do you serve caviar to people? Like, I could just jam my hands into a big <laughs> bin of fish eggs. For those of you who don't know, caviar, caviar is fish, fish eggs. eggs. Yes. You gotta squeeze a lot of fish to get the fish eggs. It's incredibly salty. You usually eat it with a tiny spoon. <laughs> um, and, oh, there's something about the spoon. The spoon has to be made of a certain non-reactive metal. Um, so that the taste of the spoon doesn't impart on the mm -hmm. taste of the caviar. Um, anyway, a lot of food, and a lot of food that is shared has a lot of ritual, it has a lot of accoutrement around it. So in this case, what's important about caviar? We know tiny spoon is important. Okay. We know a funny bowl of some kind seems to be important. I'm seeing it served on ice. So that might be Interesting. something we need to know about. You gotta keep it cold. I don't imagine what warm Whoa, caviar is yeah. like. Oh, here it is served on an egg. On a hard boiled egg. Now we're getting into something. It's eggs in egg. <laughs> eggs on eggs on eggs. <laughs> <laughs> that rap uh, 
song did not take off a lot. <laughs> what other presentations of it can we see? On a spoon? There's or? different colors. Yeah, so we got, now we're getting into the idea of what color palette we're looking at. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing these, it's like a black, kind of like a grapey, slightly purple maybe? I don't know, but this one is very vibrant, right? If I were to choose which one I like, then uh, then that's the move. Okay, right? yeah, and we've got Voodoo Val, Mm. She also really likes the way the light is hitting these orange fish eggs. That's right. Now, if we're thinking about, you know, we're saying, well, which one do... It's also this red caviar. I don't know the story is there. It's kind of red paste. But it seems like orange and black are the two. They're the two big varieties. But then we start seeing little pops of green coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, I see people are dropping some... What do we got here? Like some basil leaves? Ooh, little sprigs on here. So we're already seeing... Before we were thinking caviar is just a bunch of spheres, right? right? And now we're seeing here's all the other things that we can put with it to sure. build up the rest of the stuff. Okay. Um, so we've identified spoon, orbs. <laughs> uh, so pe people seem to be eating them off salty crackers. Mm -hmm. I know sodium intake is part of the caviar experience, <laughs> but let's go ahead and start drawing some stuff. Let's sure. let's think about. Uh, the simplest thing, which are these caviar orbs. Right. Some sweet orbs. Um, so, I like to uh, make a little folder here. If we were doing this for a TV program or a YouTube program, we would want to make folders sort of for every different thing we're making. So this is going to be the caviar. Caviar, that's how you spell it. So mm -hmm. we're just saying, this is the caviar folder. Inside the caviar, let's make, uh, yeah, what would we call it? We could call it the the assembly space where all of the objects are going to be falling onto each other. That mm -hmm. could be good because I'm intending to build this all out of shape layers. Um, I really like the shape layers. I find they're very flexible um, and they go they go right from uh, what do we got here? We've got um, we can go from uh, Illustrator uh, if we need to draw something complex mm -hmm. and then convert it right it right into uh, uh, right into what would it be? Mm. You're talking about just going to just shape layers and add yeah, perfects? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's very, a very transferable. That's right. And there's an interesting program called Overlord. Oh, I do you use I that? I use Overlord so much now. Yeah, that's a. If we can. Uh, yeah, definitely check out Battleaxe.co. I believe. <laughs> um, Overlord is an extension for Illustrator and After Effects that allows you to, with one click, transfer your artwork from Illustrator to After Effects, After Effects, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. It's an extremely fast workflow for getting artwork between the two programs. Like I said, I used it all the time now. Um, it's made by the same guy who who made the rubber hose extension mm. for limbs uh, with IK Systems on shape layers. It's true. So, so we don't very, have it very handy. We don't have it loaded up here, and we're not going to be making anything that's super uh, complicated. Mm -hmm. um, so that's. Uh, you know. Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle's got He's the back. link. <laughs> Kyle's back, baby. <laughs> Yesterday he won a premiere. Pillow, I believe. I One think, of these pillows. I think he did. You might win this today. That's Stay right. Stay active in that chat. Stay active in the chat. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's hit it up. All right, let's start making this, okay. uh, some of these graphics. So when you make a new composition, you have to choose what size the composition is. Mm -hmm. I am choosing a 1080 by 1080 uh, composition. I want a square. Okay. I'm choosing to make a square because in the future time, I want to tile this thing. So mm -hmm. if I want to use this thing and tile it around, I should probably make it a square. You can do a rectangle and tile things. You were tiling things on a rectangle. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the good stuff. So let's make a thing. All right. We, we want to make these orbs. <laughs> we know that orbs are circles. They are spheres. They are ellipses. And what color should they be? I'd say we go with this orangey red yeah. color. It's a very specific orange, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If only there was a way to... Oh, oh that. <laughs> if only I could, if only I had this out here on the canvas, I could just poke That's it with, <laughs> with my eyedropper tool. I'm not going to lie, I didn't know you could do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I, like, I, I use After being... Effects every day, uh, but I'm already learning things about the, the libraries. I've never really taken advantage of that, of that uh, feature inside of After Effects. That's hmm. great to know. Exactly. You can just sample colors, whatever you do. All right. We're really making Miles unhappy about uh, these fish eggs. He has apparently tri tripophobia. Tripophobia. What's tripophobia? I'm, I'm assuming it's a fear of eggs or something to do with fish, but um, oh. he. Is it? He's very upset that we're using caviar. I'm sorry. I'm oh. glad that you're still with us. <laughs> I hope that uh, we, don't, we don't make you ill. You know what? If, it, if you don't want to think, don't Fear think. of holes. 
Okay. It's <laughs> what? <made of> holes. <laughs> I'm not sure. Irregular patterns of clustered holes. Okay, I can see it. I'm sorry. Interesting. But I think caviar is what we're going with right now, so well, hang in there. Well, here's the other thing. These are not holes. They're yes. They're the opposite of holes. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're filled holes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. All right. So, so so how are you approaching this? Okay. Thing? Let um, me close down the library so we don't have to. Okay. Yeah. Look no at more all images. This. Okay. We'll close Too that. graphic. <laughs> That's right. So we've got the circle. We got to think about what's it going to do. What's mm -hmm. what's the thing going to do, right? Well, the things I think it'll do, it'll end up like squashing maybe, it'll end up bouncing around maybe, so we'll be changing its position, we'll be changing its scale probably. If we end up changing its scale, it'll probably end up scaling uh, off the bottom here, because it'll be like squish, squish, squish like that. Mm -hmm. So we might move the anchor point, and we should probably be thinking about what it, its relative size is. We need to start composing our frame. We need to start thinking about what things will be in relation to each other, and how that's going to go down. Okay. So, and really quickly, I just want to say that uh, you know, I, Mo Evan and I are both motion designers. I understand everything he's doing, vice versa. Yesterday, he was he was totally on par with me. But if you are new to After Effects, if any of this part of the pro any part of these processes aren't making sense to you, you're not sure what's going on. Don't hesitate to ask. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the comments, um, and I'll answer any questions you have. <laughs> exactly. Oh um, man. So what we're going to do. So we're going to open up Illustrator here because I want to try to knock around some stuff. I want to I want to play around and I want to look at and discard ideas for what the frame is actually going to look like. Okay. All right. Now you could definitely do that in After Effects. You could poke stuff around. You can move it around. But in Illustrator, it's just a lot easier to move shapes around and see compositions before you start committing time to going down a certain route. Yeah, okay. I agree. That's how I use Illustrator too. Yeah, so we like to have, when we set up our document, we can have a bunch of artboards. We can just start dropping a bunch of artboards down because we'll probably end up going from one thing to the other. And we want to kind of work in uh, contrasting areas or thinking about, you know, what specifically the composition is going to be. It's going to be made up of a bunch of circles. And we talked about them being on, maybe they could fall on a cracker. Um, so we could do that. Um, so and that's a very basic shape too. Yeah, I mean, the, the cracker is going to be like a, like a this kind of a shape. We assume, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it's a fancier Fancy, cracker. thin crackers. <laughs> or it could be a baguette. We don't know. You know, mm -hmm. who doesn't like a good baguette sometimes? Uh, so that's something to consider. You should always be considering. And what do we need on? We need uh, smart, 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 smart. <laughs> get, our, smart guides. get our smart guides. There, they are on. Hmm. We are not snapping to view. Snap to point. Snap to point, please. Um, just because I'm not super great at lining stuff up. Oh, maybe I don't even have snapping on. What is going on here? Show grid. Snap to grid. Snap to pixel. Smart guides. Hmm. hmm. How interesting. We got the snapping going down. Hmm. This is a live, raw I know. issues. It's, this is the what struggle is real. This is what happens when you go to somebody else's house and start <laughs> touching their <laughs> things. <laughs> That's what you end up with. But what would you charge a client for something like this? Just curious. So that's a, that's a great question. So here, um, here's the great, uh, great conundrum of when you're charging people for things. Depends what you're charging them for. If this is a fee for service kind of model, right? Mm -hmm. Are you charging them for the finished piece? Or are you charging them for all the time it takes for you to consider and work with them and to come up with what the piece is? Right. Sure. Which of those scenarios are you doing? Are they coming to you with a very uh, full and complete uh, sort of idea? How much labor are you going to end up doing? You should always be billing people based on the amount of labor, right. on the amount of time. It's not based on the product that you create. It's based on the labor it takes to create the product. Um, and that labor isn't just time spent with the programs open. That's time spent sketching in a book. That's time spent taking meetings. That's time spent workshopping ideas back and forth with this person. Um, that you're being brought in for highly specialized labor. You know, you're, all the steps of the process need to be taken into consideration. Right, right. Now, that being said, um, this is not a very exhaustive thing. I don't think that this is a very, shouldn't be very taxing and difficult. Hopefully you can knock it out in an afternoon. 
maybe. I don't know how fast everybody works, but that's totally subjective and up to people. The other thing I'll say is that not everyone has to charge or charges the same stuff. Right. So in order to live in yes. some places, the geo arbitrage of area areas allows you to charge totally differently. What you need to do is figure out how much you need to bill people so that you, you can survive and pay yourself a living wage. Right. <laughs> and you gotta kinda work it back from that. That's a big discussion about biz- running, a, running a small business. Yes. Because um, as a freelancer, you are a small business of one person. So that's, uh, yeah. So yeah, you, you continue creating. Yeah. Uh, but I, Melissa, to your, your second question of doing an entire package deal start to finish, uh, going along with what Evan was saying, um, everybody needs to have their own way of putting together a price point. There, I don't think there's any s- one set range that you charge somebody that's a universally accepted model. And like Evan sa- said, it you, you can't just say, well, it's a YouTube intro, and going just off of a YouTube intro, no other information, say it's gonna cost you a thousand dollars. Because you have no idea what goes into that. There's gonna be a lot of back and forth with you and the client. So the way that I personally do it is I, I have a day rate that I base my work hours off of, and that's an eight hour day, so I can break it down into an hourly rate if I need to. And then I will estimate the entire project, uh, how much time I think it's going to take, based on my process and I can present what my process is if it includes you know, time spent concepting and researching and sketching out an animatic and designing boards, depending on what the project is, I can present all of that to the client like when I'm on the phone with them or I might just give them a PDF saying this is my process and breaking down exactly how much I charge per hour for each one of those uh, different parts of the process. Uh, but it, there is, the, the short answer, there's no one set number to charge somebody on any project. It's, mm. I, for me, at least, it's always based on my day rate or my hourly rate and how much time I think I'm going to be spending on that project. Mm. Yeah, and it's it's very subjective, has to do with kind of where you are in your career as well. And there's also market forces that will impact, you know, who's actually paying what price for what things. So it fluctuates. I wish there was an easy answer. I wish there was right. a grid. But there are, depending on where you live, so in Canada, Let's hear some fun facts about Canada. Yes. Uh, industry Canada puts out a survey that says, in this industry, in people with these types of jobs, these are the sorts of salaries that they're doing. Mm-hmm. So um, what we could we can sometimes do is look at that and say, oh, this is a rough guide of what the general yearly salary of someone doing the type of work that I'm doing. Where am I in that in that area, mm-hmm. right? And it's um, it's it's a good way to see, like, okay, I'm freelancing, so are my rates and the amount of work I'm doing, am I on par with the industry where that's at? So that can be very helpful to say, all right, am I similar to my neighbors in the field? Mm -hmm. You know, so that helps. And also just, if you know anybody else who's like, oh, you're in the similar spot to me, what are you, what are you charging right now? Right. You know, that, you know, that, that kind of thing. But the one thing that can also really help is a lot of folks go through a studio system before they end up Mm -hmm. being, being freelance. So you already have an idea of how much you should be getting paid when you've, You've been doing that in an office environment. But there are other things to consider when you're freelancing are the ideas of, you probably don't have health insurance, you definitely don't have a pension. These are things you need to consider in increasing right. your billings. There are a lot of factors. There's a lot of, a lot of factors. Um, speaking of factors, we got this uh, pile of caviar on a cracker. You know. <laughs> Which people are just hating on the crackers. They really don't like I it. I'll tell you what. What else can we put on a cracker? We're gonna switch it. We're gonna okay. switch it from this. Okay, <laughs> this is your this is your second chance, everyone. I know you all have an opinion on this. What could we put on a cracker besides caviar? Yeah. What so, goes on the cracker? Go ahead and let us know. Yeah. Also, Miles, I saw. I'm sorry that you keep asking this. Did I put the creative Claude thing that I made yesterday on my YouTube channel? No. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it isn't finished. Um, yesterday, I, I tried to keep it as uh, spontaneous as possible. So what I made yesterday is what is done. Mm. But uh, maybe I'll consider finishing it. <laughs> and, and really polishing it off so you can see it. Uh, okay, here we get, we've got some peanut butter. Uh, Pickles! Cheese, a dollop of cream cheese, peanut butter, peanut butter. We've got a lot of PBs. PBs in these comments, M&Ms. Goat cheese and chives, I love good goat cheese. <laughs> All right. Is that a S- voodoo valve? Is that a soft goat cheese or a hard goat cheese? Nothing with holes, please. Don't put any holes in this cracker. <laughs> Uh, okay, all right. But salami cheese, uh, poof, man. Pepperoni, yeah. What are you feeling? Do you want to you want to add some meat? A lot of these things are similar shape. That's uh-huh. the other thing. So, what a slice of pickle versus 
a slice of salami. What's the real difference there, right? What's sure. the real difference? Um, and so, you know, well, we could explore what the real difference would be, right? That's kind of, if we want to show the essentialness of a, of a pickle slice, how do we know that the slice of pickle isn't a slice of something else, right? Right. <laughs> so what we might say about that is that we know, usually, we have cross-cut uh, pickles, right? It's kind of the Sorry, I'm laughing at the comments here. <laughs> Cross-cut pickle. Okay, so we're doing a pickle. Yeah, let's try okay. that out. And we'll try to... We're going to do a pickle. A Lunchable. <laughs> a Lunchable! <laughs> Look, we just downgraded the, uh, the the general classiness yeah. of the hors d'oeuvres what quite happened? a bit. Oh, man. That's, okay, it's... so how, yeah, what's your approach on this pickle? All right. So a pickle is a cylinder, just like this thing is a cylinder, right? These are two normal-looking cylinders. How would we know that one thing is different than the other? You know, even without color, color is definitely a differentiator, color is right? Big, yeah. And pickles have a skin on them, right? So we would, you need to start considering. Well, it's going to be like this, right? You're going to end up with a little skin around the outside. All right, that makes sense to me. Well, then, uh, if you want to do that kind of cross-cut thing, how would we make that happen? Like, uh, what do we say? Like crinkle fries? Is that what you call them? Mm -hmm. um, you could end up with. Uh, Making these lovely lines and just snapping a few of them down. And we're just gonna do 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 do. You can wavy this across. I'm gonna like start cutting things up and down on this thing, and so we're gonna end up with these little V shapes that are gonna go between them. Um, or maybe they'll, they could be little rounded, little rounded grooves. Maybe that could be a way to to cut them. Mm, pickles, pickles, pickles. I like pickles. Not everybody does like pickles. We got some Pickle Rick fans in yeah. the comments. Pickle Rick. <laughs> um, also, I'm so sorry, Axel. Premier just crashed for him, and he had not saved. Ah! So, friendly reminder: if you're working on your uh, your your projects right now, live with us, save. Yeah. Go ahead and save right now. Always be saving. Um, except for me, I'm not going to save at all. I'm a lunatic. <laughs> I'm <laughs> living on the edge. So when I think about how are we actually going to make this thing fall down on the cracker? What's it going to do when it comes down? Well, mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to hit. I think what's interesting is if it hits one edge and then and then like like this, or maybe it falls straight down and like this, like like floops like this. Another floop. Yep. <laughs> Keep saying flooping. <laughs> we're mushing. We're mushing. That that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so it's going to go. Bleh. Kind of like that. Get some organic movement in there. So I keep coming back to like, we've really reverted back to that isometric idea, okay. right? Yeah. But that's not, that's that's not in keeping. It's easy because you're able to add more levels of detail, right? Mm -hmm. You say, oh, it's isometric. We can add more levels of detail. We don't need to delete things. Let's just move to another artboard. We don't need to add more levels of detail. We want to strip levels of detail away until we arrive. That, that essential pickle. The minimalist pickle. <laughs> that essential pickle. Um, so, if we're talking about, why don't we just drop a gherkin on here? We could do that. We could drop a gherkin-y shape. But again, those are not super attractive. So, what would we do? You are a man of many words. I got all that I have never used in my life. Really? Oh. I, I loved being able to hang out with Evan. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure many of you know Evan from his YouTube channel and have learned from him, as have I. But meeting him in person, a treat. You should do it. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Everyone should try to meet Evan at least once in their life. <laughs> On a dark road, sometimes you, everyone runs into Evan. Um, all right. So let's say this is going to be a little piece of bread, right? All right. All right. Maybe that's bread. Let's let's give it some some darkness to it, so we know that's an object. Okay. Now this thing is going to be pickle slice. Now the pickle slice, again, we said we're going to cut little little rivets in it. That's going to be, that's the move. So uh, when we're working in uh, in this program here, um, it's, that, uh, it's pretty fun to just be able to really quickly uh, knock stuff out. Um, I really like that uh, in Illustrator we have the ability to make shapes sort of very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of define them. They have this shape combining tool that I use a lot, like a lot of a lot. Um, and and to just be like, all right, well, here's a bunch of shapes. Now, how do they, how are they going to interact with each other? Well, you, you call up the tool. Uh, was it like uh, Shift M? You get this thing, and you can say like, all right, well, just remove these. Mm. Chop, 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 chop. Those are being removed. They're gone. And then add these. 
add all those together, Boop. just like that. So this Very is nice. this is a crinkly pickle right there. Yeah. And then we could say, well, it shouldn't be totally angular. It should be rounded, so we can start to round that off if we want. If I didn't have so many points, it would round. The reason why you can't do that in, at this juncture is because a lot of these are actually a combination of points, mm. which is not super great. But let's see if we can. No, they're all they're all stuck. We can round them off in various ways, mm -hmm. but we can even do that in After Effects. Oh, we could use the rounded corners. Yeah. That might be a pro move to do that. Um, so we got. Oh, there's a little point left over. So we can start thinking about colors. This is kind of a pickly color, um, and this will be kind of a uh, bruschetta y color, kind of like this. Kind of kind of on the fence about these colors. Well, uh, that's also something you can adjust in After Effects, right? Bingo. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is you select a color, nice color over here. You got swatches you can go through. We could apply a gradient to it. Uh, we get the window, where is that? Color guide. You familiar with this beautiful color guide? Yes. Um, this thing gets Wonderful. you, can get you at a lot of jams, because um, it starts to suggest uh, things to you. Um, so for example, let's say this was our base pickle color. You know, we're looking at this like, I don't know. Like, what other colors would go with it? We can start to see what colors are analogous with this. You know, we can start to see yes. relationships between things and start to define stuff. But there's also a lot of swatch libraries um, that are built in here. So if we're like, well, open up uh, some, give me some cool colors. Give me some desaturated colors. Give me some of those, and it'll pop up this stuff right here, which can be very helpful. So you can say, oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. kind of a pickly color. That's kind of a pickly color. And I can work within this family here to define stuff. So this is just, these are tools that are at your disposal to make this kind of thing just happen for you, right? So, so we got we got this baguette. Maybe this will be our, our baguette on the bottom. This will be our, our pickle slice mm -hmm. above it. Mm -hmm. What pairs well with pickle? You can't just eat pickle on a cracker. Is that a? I wouldn't know. I don't <laughs> enjoy pickles myself. Um, Real pickle hater over here. All right. I mean, toothpicks always go well with these kinds of things, right? <laughs> well, you You're not going to eat the toothpick. You need to but... keep it on the cracker somehow. Yeah. Right. Um, well, there's two ways you can keep things together as an hors d'oeuvre. You either use a pasty kind of deal, or you. Uh, what would you do? You would. Um, let's see. What could you do? Uh, like a cream you, cheese. Yeah, you, cream cheese, sure. That could be a thing. I heard cream a lot of cheese and pickles. I saw. Is that a thing, guys? Sure, why not? <laughs> 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 We've already got the pickle. We've come this far. Well, I'm interested. How would you do something like cream cheese, since that's a much less solid yeah. formed we, type of food? So again, we need to think about how is it going to get there. Where is it going to end up? Right. What's it going to eventually come to rest as? And for us, we could really just start drawing, grabbing our pen tool. And we could just start drawing. We know it's going to end in kind of a flat situation on the bottom. And, you know, it should have kind of a waviness to it when it ends. And like, maybe this will be its final kind of resting state. But when it comes to soft things, I would generally say you don't really need to worry too much about defining them uh, sort of rigidly before mm -hmm. you start. What I'm going to end up having to do probably is do a lot of hand Stuff like little manual keyframes, okay. probably frame by frame, to make this dollop uh, come together. Okay. Now, if the pickle's resting on the dollop, I don't think it'll rest kind of smoothly. It'll probably just kind of like glorp. Uh, again, glorp. again, Hashtag glorp. another bunch of words. More, more glorping. Glorp. Floor, <laughs> get your flooping, get your glorping. Um, maybe it would end up like this, but really, you, you want to have these ridges of the of the pickle, so you know what that is. So, boop, 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 boop. maybe. I don't know. I think cream cheese is gross myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it's not, I'm not here to eat this. It's for the client to do that. So. Right. You got to do what the client says. And um, I today am the client. So that's right. We're doing cream cheese, Evan. Okay. As you say. <laughs> as you say. All right. So we also know we're not going to work with any strokes on this. Sure. Um, but I like, I mean, even from just these basic, very simple shapes. Uh, you can you can start to take some form out of it yeah. and identify what you're going for. Exactly. Now, I feel like we need a third ingredient in here because right now we have salty and then we've got gross <laughs> and then we've got uh, crunchy. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna make an executive decision. I'm gonna go for a cherry tomato. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're gonna, Why not? <laughs> I'm gonna go for a cherry. I'm making a I'm making an audible. <laughs> I'm calling <laughs> I'm calling an audible on the play here. 
And so generally we have these kinds of colors coming together, right? We've got these things sticking together. If these things are rigid, they won't interact with each other. Um, the tomato would bounce off. So again, we need that, that toothpick that we talked about. So we just jam a toothpick through the whole yeah. thing and we'd say. And that's a simple, simple, simple piece of geometry. Simple, simple. These are just lines usually. All right. So then we go back from it, we look at it, and we think, is this pleasing to look at? Well, it's definitely kind of weird to look at, but from our from our raw perspective, what can we do to make this better? You know, what could make maybe this shape isn't exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should try it as uh, an actual line. If we're working with simple geometry, why don't we simplify it even more? Let's simplify it to the point where things um, things stop being so literal. Ah, don't be so literal. Yes. You know, take some liberties. It's not a not a literal pickle. It's a representation of a pickle. Um, Abstract. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We can still use the same colors if we want. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, all right, well now this might be the pickle. Doop, 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 doop. Bigger, 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 bigger. So we Big go. Big old fat stroke. There you go, just like this. Boop. Now if we work with strokes, that also means that later on we can uh, sort of make use of them mm. as strokes yes. alone. Yes, very handy in After Effects. Can be, can be. Um, so now, let's see, from our raw beginnings, we're ending up with this kind of thing. While you're making this, I saw Ash had a, a question about how each of us got into motion design. Mm. Um, and we were actually, I think we were talking about this last night. Oh, yeah. Uh, I personally got into it when my oldest brother um, showed me After Effects for the first time and how you could make lightsabers with this piece <laughs> of software. And that was my gateway drug to uh. motion, what eventually became motion graphics. And I'm. I learned the same way that I'm sure 99% of you have, which was through videocopilot.net, yep. Andrew Kramer, and guys like Evan here. I, I pretty much was self-taught through people like Evan that were online sharing knowledge and uh, eventually got a job once I graduated um, doing motion design. Doing the thing. Yeah. It's uh, it's amazing. A very similar uh, story in high school. We're like, man, we should make a cool video with like some uh, some lightsabers and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was the oh thing. Oh boy, it was, <laughs> I feel like everyone's got that kind of uh, secret origin story, you know? Um, so, here we are, we're representing the same ingredients. For me, it was uh, it was kind of the same thing. We were messing around with video in high school and then uh, when I was in university, I got in at a co-op placement at like a news uh, place that the government was running for the army. It was like base TV kind of thing. And they're like, oh, have you ever used any editing software before? And I was like, yeah. This is during the interview, right? I don't, mm -hmm. like, I thought I was going up for like a PA position or something <laughs> like that. And like, you ever used editing software before? Like, yeah, I've done that. Like, all right, you're the After Effects guy now. Like, oh, really? Is, is that easy? Listen, buddy, this is the army. We can train anyone to do anything. So I was like, all right, let's try it. You know, and, and that was the kick in the pants I needed to really do this stuff. And it, it was quite an environment because you end up doing a lot of things kind of outside your comfort zone um, that you know people just expect you to have them done by the end of the day. You figure it out, or you don't figure it out, and then you didn't figure it out. So those, right. and, and you get to enjoy the consequences of whatever that is, <laughs> you know. So you know, I'd, I'd recommend figuring it out. You know, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of times the necessity of, of things really pushes you. Mm -hmm. yeah. For instance. Uh, I knew nothing about expressions and was asked to teach them. <laughs> so I spent a, a good two weeks studying nothing but expressions and learned a lot, even from you. Uh. <laughs> uh, the source rected time expression. Um, mm. Evan has a, I'm sure, a video that most people who have ever wanted to size a box to a text <laughs> layer have seen because you do an excellent job of explaining how that works. Well, thanks. Yeah, and it's uh, it's sort of thing because then you went on to improve on the tutorial as well because you've got you got a nice piece out, <laughs> you know. So it, and the thing is that like, the community builds on each other. Right. So, um, it's a wonderful community we have. And speaking of building on each other, here's a different arrangement of the things. Right. Yeah. These are the same ingredients, but they're arranged totally differently into into this kind of a format, which is the different. I think this pickle should be smaller, uh, but thicker. Um, and that kind of thing. So now we're now we're getting to something a little bit more artistic. Very right? much. You yeah. know, I this, love seeing this progression. Yeah, this is, you know, certainly realistic. This, though unrealistic, um, is 
it still represents the same thing. Right. Um, but we should also be aware that we're probably going to use like a colored background so that the white can actually stand out of that. Like it doesn't make any sense for us to use a, a darker, you know, we could be using a totally dark background or something, but let's just say we're using like a like a medium kind of gray background okay. so that things kind of stand out. Um, but yeah, so how are we feeling about colors? How are we feeling about shapes? You're the client. Lay it on me. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> mm -hmm. that red is a little too bright. Mm, that's true. So you can always go in here and you say, oh, you know what? Well, it's too bright. Then how about this? Is this getting more, to it's not more tomato-y at all. Tomato-y is closer on the orange spectrum. Sure. Right? So it's a little bit more yeah, like that. Yeah, right? a little more muted. Okay. I like that. All right. How do you feel about the pickle colors? Pickle color doing I it I think for we you? got the pickle color just <laughs> right, right on the nose. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the color. I, I'm pretty happy with the way this is going. I don't. Maybe we can uh, visit the background colors a little later on. But Absolutely. as far as what you got here, I think we're we're right on track. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna roll with this. This is the thing. This is the target we're aiming at. Let's make some layers that come on and do that stuff. All right. So we go in here. And so this is a case where you could, if you had Overlord, you could easily, with one click, just transfer that <laughs> illustration straight to After Effects. It would all just go right in, go right in there. How, how, are, you, how are you planning on doing it now, though? I mean, there well, are other ways, many ways to do lots of things between all the Adobe software. So mm -hmm. what's, what's your technique of choice here? So a lot of it really comes down to what, what do I intend to do to these things? What do I intend to do with them? Oh, someone's saying some bumps on the pickle would be cool, eh? Ooh, hmm. Good, good the, advice. A value, as, as you know, how do you know that this is a pickle and not a bean, right? Uh -huh. That's a very good point. <laughs> Look, as the designer, I would just blame the producer for not catching this one. <laughs> <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy out for me. Uh -huh. So I think texture is something we're going to cover in yes. After Effects, yes. right? Uh, so let's, if we focus on shape here and we deal with texture there. I'm not okay. sure that I want to uh, break up the silhouette with a bunch of like nubs on it. I don't know if that is uh, at this juncture a good move. But what we can always do in After Effects later is try to layer some more stuff on it and make changes. Um, I wonder if we should cut the tomato. I don't know. Cross I really do like the angle that you had on the previous one with that toothpick and Kyle brought the same, the same mm. point up. That Giving it a little bit of an asymmetrical yes. layout may may give it some more. So let's try that. Let's, okay, let's let's do a little bit more work in here before we before we give it up. We'll say this is going to be the axis. We'll say if this will be the axis like this, then we start to rearrange these things along that axis. Do, do, do. Yeah, this is nice because you're you're keeping the shapes. The forms are still the same, but you're giving it a little bit more of an organic, mm -hmm. uh, like real world uh, touches by adding in some imperfection in the layout. Yeah. And so like if we really want to we really want to mess this up a little bit more, maybe this should have a little bit of um, a little bit of something to it, you know. I don't think that it's really um, I don't think it really needs to be as rigid and mm -hmm. uniform cuz really that could be a, a cylinder of of cheese, right? That could be a little mozzarella uh, sure. down there. Um, Someone I mentioned in the chat, I saw that they, they said that uh, Evan is from the Ottawa Valley. I'm like, Evan is not from the Ottawa Valley. I live there, but uh, I'm definitely not from there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you that much, you know. Oh, I'm not I'm not throwing shade on the valley. The valley people are very nice. I'm just not from there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that looks nice. I like that uh, glob. A little wave in there. And that may get changed um, in After Effects as we have something come in and settle. Right. right. But it's got some nice floop. Yeah, it's got, it's got some floop and some glorp. <laughs> Good floop, <laughs> solid glorp. So, <laughs> so what are you gonna uh, like? What what is your process now for getting this to After Effects? Okay, so I kind of have to decide how is this gonna show up, right? Right. <laughs> um, how does this, an Ottawa <laughs> Valley girl compared to American Valley girl? I would imagine not not quite the same. Those mean very different things. Yeah. Like a, when they say Valley girl, that means. In LA, right? Right. Um, the Valley. The Valley, which means you think of someone who has sort of money, status. They say, like, you know, whatever. Uh, an Ottawa this Valley guy. girl is the sort of person who uh, is usually an ATV enthusiast. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that uh, it's very rural and agricultural out there. Mm. And uh, I don't know, Ottawa Valley girls are, are some of the best girls in the world. So it's. High praise. That's right. Uh, there we go. So now let's go to After Effects. We'll bring some stuff in. We were saying we need to think about 
how the thing is going to animate. Right. Do I want to have a little 3D facsimile on these things when they come in? Do I want them to be totally two-dimensional? Do I want them to, do I, the big question is, do I need more geometry than what mm. I have, right. you know? And if I do, then, you know, I, I might need to start uh, bringing in more things. We can get rid of those, those fish eggs because we've, we've changed track out here. Uh, we need more frames. Our assembly composition doesn't have enough frames for me. Uh, we need five seconds of frames, please. And so let's bring some stuff in. So we can really just copy things and paste them. Mm. Um, so if you copy a path, you draw a path, and then you paste the path, it's right there. There you go. So, you know, to show you that magic trick one more time, we are copying a path, we are drawing a path, So we, and we're just clicking with the pen tool to make a path to populate with parameters. Right. Then we paste the path, and it's right there. So that's it. We did it. We nailed it. We're very good, very good at what we're doing. Um, <laughs> and then we can bring in, bring in this color. So I'm going to copy the color and I'm going to paste the hex color right in there. So we're we're just moving the color from one thing to the other. Sometimes you might use a plugin that has like a, a palette up here that could be really helpful. Um, for us though, uh, we don't really need to be referencing too much palettes. And mm -hmm. in a later step, I know I'm going to be changing a lot of stuff. So. Uh, da, da, da. So what I think we'll do is I'll just have this animate on kind of a, a easy two-dimensional way. Uh, mm -hmm. Save a little time so we can. And it's a pro I think that's appropriate for this type of a, uh, a YouTube show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't want to be over complicating things. Uh, we don't necessarily need to uh, do, do too much. Uh, one thing I want to think about is proportion rel relation to the. Um, to sort of a frame here. Where does this fall in the grid? Mm. You know, I've got mine divided up into sixths here. These are all divided into sixths. And uh, <laughs> <because> <laughs> I didn't do my vocal warm-up exercises today. <laughs> so red leather, yellow leather. There you go. Uh, so we got this divided up into sixths. Uh, and uh, I think that's a good sort of ratio to work with. So I might sort of just position this sort of here where it's going to land. And uh, we're gonna just kind of stretch these out maybe a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting the path and I'm, I'm increasing the size of the path and changing the path information. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm saying the path a lot because I'm not scaling the layer. Right, right. right. that is an important thing to distinguish. So in these things, there are properties for the scale of the layer, there are properties for the scale of the shape, there is a property to, so many properties on properties inside properties, you know. And the property I'm changing is just the path. And so that I can keep the anchor point in the middle. Because I think what I want to do is have this thing scale, position, and rotate. So I'm just hitting SPR, calling those things up. And what I think we will do is have this thing kind of pop up into the air and then fall on the ground. It'll be like, whoop, like that. Okay. Um, which I, you know. Some weeps? Yep. If it were the pillow, it would go like, whoop. That's a great reference. Right? That's actually another little little trick yeah. for for us motion designers. You know, there's you can look at water to see how it sloshes. Uh, you can see how a pillow yeah. weeps. <laughs> so, well, I was gonna like throw my phone, but I don't have it in a case. So I'm not <laughs> going to do that. Um, but uh, if you're thinking about how would something happen, well, you should use a physical object that's similar to that physical object. Yeah. So. Uh, I'll, I'll give you some reference. Thank you. So notice it bounced, right? Yes. It had some little bit of back and forth. It doesn't it. just stop. There you go. Yeah. So we would like to probably mirror some of that because that is a sort of character that tells us stuff is going on. So what we're going to do is start this thing off pretty small. Let's start it off rotated and let's start it off down in the frame. And then it's going to come up into uh, a more vertical spot. Eventually it'll land here. But where I want it to go first is up. And it's going to go up around here. It's going to turn over. So it's going to go up. And then when it turns, I'm going to keep turning. So keep turning in the same direction that you were turning. And it's going to turn all the way around like this. So it's going to go whew, like that, maybe. That's not exactly the good stuff. So let's say it turns up, and then it'll start to fall back down. So right now, it's looking very terrible. That's uh, OK. It's a process. That's right. So. It coming on fast is good. We want it to have a little hang time in the air when it's chilling out up here. So hit little F9 to have it kind of chill. Um, and then it'll come back down. I want it to be at full scale by the time it gets there. Boop, boop. 
so that should also be eased. Um, then we're gonna kick into the graph editor, everyone's favorite editor of things. You should know Ooh. how to use it if you don't. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't use it, start using yes. it. Yes. And I kind of feel now that I see this that the cracker is too big. Like this, this cracker too big. Um, just that it expands to too much of the frame. Mm. We don't have any white space around it. It's not really. Uh, it's not super good. Um, so maybe I'll just maybe its final scale will be actually quite a bit smaller. Whoop. I'm gonna answer some questions real quick. Somebody's asking how to do the gr how to pull up the grid. I believe it's command apostrophe. Is that how you brought up your grid? Command apostrophe. Is that this one? Oh, there's. That's a, was, so where did you get your grid from? Oh, so that is. I just go to this little thing here and I. Proportional grid. There you go. That's the one Evan's using. If you, the the command apostrophe grid that you can customize to be, uh, however, dense you want it to be. If you mm. go into your preferences and then. Uh, grids and guides. You can customize what that grid specifically looks like, the color, the number of pixels. Uh, oh, so the one you're using is called the proportional grid, right? Yeah, very that good. one you can also customize in the preferences uh, under grids and guides in After Effects. Mm -hmm. Also, I think it was either Ash or, no, I think Axel had to leave and he was bummed that he wasn't going to get to see the rest. But oh. don't fear, all of these are uh, live streams from Adobe are recorded and placed onto YouTube, onto Adobe Creative Cloud, um, on their YouTube <laughs> channel. So you can always tune in, rewatch anything that you missed. Yeah. Uh, forever. Yeah. Forever. <laughs> All <laughs> the mistakes that we make. That's forever. Right. All, yeah. The archived for your enjoyment. Uh, All right. So you've got some some much more like uh, unique motion happening now that you've gone through this graph editor. Yeah. Uh, all the spinning I'm not feeling. I think it's doing too much spinning. So let me just knock that out. Let me, let's start at the end. Where should it, should show up and probably be like that and then fall down. We should also be deciding where the floor is. Right. Where's the floor? Well, the floor is gonna be right here. So let's put a little guide, guide layer. Um, so if it comes up and then it's like this and then it's gonna fall on the floor. So ba-boom. And it's gonna hit the floor here. Bam, it's gonna hit the floor, right? It's not, not sink through the floor, it's gonna hit the floor. So it's gonna come up, and we should have, I do still do want it rotating as it comes up. So just maybe a little bit of rotating as it comes up. There we go. Boop, ba -doo. and then it falls, gravity grabs a hold of it, and it starts to pull it down, and so when we look at the graph here, we could start to angle it like this, maybe. Whoop, bam. That's Very nice. Um, that's a bit extreme. There we go. A nice linear as it's coming down. And now we have to start having things happen to it. What I like to sometimes do is use uh, some null objects, maybe, mm -hmm. to start to turn things. Or we could just turn it around this axis right here. So it's going to be falling. Let's see, as it comes down, when it's going to actually contact the ground will be here. So I'll just move it to hit the ground there. Um, and then, doop, it hits here, and then it needs to start turning. And what we should also do is make note of where does it hit. Hits right here. And now it's going to start turning and moving. So the position will be changing, the rotation will be changing. Boop. So the next thing it'll do is just kind of rotate, and it'll eventually, it'll eventually become flat, right? We, right. Know, we know that eventually it'll it'll reach an amount of flatness. Yeah, I, I work that way a lot too, where I where I decide or determine where it's going to be at the end, and mm -hmm. kind of think about how I want it to get there. And that's what you're doing right now. Exactly. You want to. Boop. So that's yeah. not quite right because it's going past and, and that's not cool because uh, if you look at the graph editor, it's because the graphs don't really line up in, in any meaningful way. Um, so that's kind of good. It's kind of fallen down. Uh, you can start to touch this stuff up uh, just so that it doesn't sort of floop itself all over the place um, like that. Boop. Pa -bunk. Very nice. So it comes up, pop bunk, just like that. And we talked about a little bit of a bounce, eh? Mm -hmm. At this speed, we don't anticipate that a bounce would happen. So right. what I think we would do is we would just take these, squish them a little bit, 
That, what, what uh, Evan just did was you held down Option, is that yeah, right? Yeah, so I'm selecting all these keyframes, holding down Option, I can make it longer, shorter, whoop, bunk. It's, so. like, it's like scaling the timing of your keyframes. Mm. Pro tip. Yeah, and you'll notice, so if we, how, do you, how did you do yesterday, you like zoomed in on a part of the screen? How did you do that? Hold down Control and scroll in <gasps> on the mouse wheel. Look at this. So, more pro tips. Yeah, notice, yeah, these are pro streaming tips. <laughs> so you'll notice right here that this keyframe no longer lines up on an actual frame. Yeah. That information exists, but it is still in between. Um, so it, you know, we haven't lost that information, and, but it's, you know, it's just accelerating, whoop, accelerating the stuff. So whoop, and down. Now we probably want this to start in darkness so we can kind of know what it's like to have nothing and then something and then there it is. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what else is good? We needed that bounce. We want it to kind of bounce up a little. This is where I think I might use a null uh, in here. So let's make a new null, new null object. Drop that down in the corner. Parent this thing to that thing. Pa plunk. Now. The null is, is now going to do a little bit of work for us, uh, that its rotation is now going to go up a little bit, just a little bit, just a wee bit, and then back down, back down to zero. So then we can take this one, and if we ease that, just like that. And why did you use the null? So I'm using the null because its anchor point is going to be over here. The other ones, if I were to rotate this layer, its anchor point is here, and rotating it around that would cause it to spin around here. The null is over here, so it is like a new sort of axis that we can make use of. And in fact, putting the null at the impact point uh, lets us do a bunch of other fun things, because we wouldn't have had to even use these keyframes here. We could stop worrying about the rotation altogether when it comes down, and we could stop worrying about the position altogether when it comes down. You know, we just need that landing position because now this guy is going to take over, yeah. right? And so its rotation is going to take over, taking us to flatness, bloop, right there. So it can it can do that for us, no problem. So now, now we're just we have a separate thing controlling stuff, but doesn't it look so much neater? You know that, that this is doing some stuff. Something else that it should be doing is move, changing its position a little bit. Because if this thing is tipping, you have something yeah. to tip. Let's let's throw your phone around. Here we some go. More. While we do this, I'm gonna just say chat hype. We need some some good comments and uh, action in the comments right now because the giveaway is coming up. So get excited. Mm. We're going to be giving away one of these fantastic pillows. Yeah, beautiful to pillow. One of you lucky viewers. So that we're going to imbue with our our dream energy. Yes. So when you sleep on it, you can <laughs> enjoy that. So as I was dropping your phone. Uh, everyone get, get get hyped in the chat while I drop Jake's phone. <laughs> Say a prayer for the phone. But notice when we drop it, it moved forward when we dropped it. We can't tell because we didn't put a camera down here today. But no, we're, we're on screen. Oh, okay. There you go. See how it jumped? Like, this is where it is. Now it's like an inch away, right? The mm -hmm. weight of this moves it away. Moves it away. So this, the weight of it, needs to move it away. And so we can just... Bump it over like that, and then we'll just move it away. Then it's gonna, as it comes down, it's gonna move, and we need to ease those again because it's gonna be gathering friction. And there we go. So up, pa, just like that. So now we've got this thing. It's going. It's doing stuff. And in fact, we should probably ease the start of it because it doesn't immediately start sliding. And there we go. So now we've got that going on. And now you'll notice that its ending spot isn't exactly in the center, right? It's not it's not where where I think we would want it for our overall composition. So what I think I'll do is I'll just grab these two position keyframes and just shift it all a little bit like that. Uh, ba -ba, just like that. I believe that we have a winner. We have a winner. For our giveaway, it is Sam Padula. Congratulations. Padula. Sam. You are the lucky winner of this After Effects plush pillow that I wish I had. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna rub it on Evan's head. And now it's yours. <laughs> Congrats. That's how people get luck around the office. <laughs> Just come around and rub the bald guy. <laughs> it's a fun joke. Everyone who's bald loves that. <laughs> Keep doing it. <laughs>
<laughs> We're having fun, guys. <laughs> We're having fun. <laughs> All right. So, simple cracker coming on. Simple cracker animation. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Let's add some more ingredients. Um, the other ingredient is this soft cheese here. Um, it's kind of logical to do it in the order that they're, they're stacked, right? You know, that makes sense. If we are pretending that in the verisimilitude of our piece, verisimilitude, you went to a film program, you know this. <laughs> <laughs> Big words today, guys. <laughs> is the, the truth and consistency of the piece, right? right? So in this piece, we're saying that this is the ground. You can't see the ground, but we're saying it's here by what is reacting to the ground. If I were to have something just fall right through this, well, I'm telling you there is no ground, there are no rules, and we live in a nightmare. Um, yes. <laughs> that's right. There are no rules. <laughs> There's no rules. Uh, but yeah, so what we want to do is maintain the fiction. Right? We want to maintain that idea. Right. And so that means that this should impact the top of the stuff. So it's going to be a, a, a glorp. <laughs> the glorp's going <laughs> to oh, fall down. Oh, right. We're moving from our floops. We've got some whips, and now we're on some some. <laughs> what, what did you just say? Glorps. Glorps. Glorp. 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 We got the floops, <laughs> and we're going for glorps now. Yeah. Okay. So how do we glorp it up? Go for glorps. <laughs> Go for glorp. Bring. Go for glorps. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we have so much energy today. That's I, great. Yeah, this is wonderful. <laughs> All uh, right. We'll be here you know, it's tomorrow cause, too. Because we actually got a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> big difference. Uh, all right. So we're going to give this a little color. Um, and again, we could have copy and pasted the color. But what we're going to do is end up sort of deforming and, and mushing a path around. So I've created a circle that's an ellipse. We can right click on here and convert it to a Bezier path, which gives us the handles. This is the, the much desired handle situation. Um, and we're just going to have this thing kind of fall down out of the sky, you know. And so this has come on, and this should start falling soon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we don't need to wait around. We don't have a lot of time to, to sort of wait too much on this. So let's just have it fall from out of frame, maybe. And it's going to fall. Uh, da, da, da. Given how we believe gravity is working, it's going to fall right here, maybe. Hmm. Is falling vertically the most interesting move? What if it, uh, I mean, uh, you don't, you <laughs> Producer, don't, Producer Jake, <laughs> jumping in. If I could add in my little bit of client <laughs> yep. uh, guidelines, I, t I typically spread cream cheese on a cracker. I don't know how you use cream cheese, <laughs> man. That's... So what, what if it came in from the side instead Ooh. of the top? Like, let's throw it at it. Yeah, like just a little. <laughs> Bam! Um, a cream cheese. <laughs> this is good. We're going to have some cream cheese throwdown. Okay. <laughs> That's gross. That'll make, <laughs> that'll make your kitchen nasty. Don't do that. Um, okay, so it's going to be coming in from the side, like a meteor here. Flip it. Impacting. Glorp it. So it's <laughs> Bop it. Bop it. <laughs> Twist. <laughs> <laughs> So that needs to be faster, faster, faster. There we go. Now it's kabam. Some really glorpy impact here. Yeah. Now if it's going fast, what do we know about liquids? Well, they need to become mm. blobulous, right? Yes. We're not going to throw, don't worry, Gus, we're not going to throw liquids around your studio. <laughs> it's not going to happen. We're not going to make a mess. On a later day, though, we should, <laughs> we should prepare to do such things, because uh, those kinds of experiments can really help you with, uh, hmm. You know what? Maybe we should go from this side because it's more of a target because it's going to be hitting. Oh, the right. yeah. That's you know that's probably the the side we want that to be on. So I'm just going to rotate it a little bit just so that the points are kind of where I want it to be. The, the motion. Yeah, and because what we're going to do is we're going to have it strike here and then spread over like that. Um, and so you'll notice that. Because we've been using these kind of curved things, we end up with this curved uh, path here, mm -hmm. which can be a little bit confusing. So you just got to kind of, you have to check sometimes if you've got uh, linear or Bezier motion paths that can become confusing. Right. So, all right, that's okay. A friendly it's reminder that we have 20 minutes left on our challenge submission deadline. Holy moly, time so flies, man. You guys are all. Uh, 
getting near the, the final touches, getting ready to export. Mm. To win a fabulous prize. Oh, yes. Of a year of Creative Cloud subscription. Yeah. I don't want to, I mean, it's kind of, kind of a big, that's a big prize, it's man. A that's, big prize. That's, a big, that's a big deal, you know? Like, as, a, as someone who, you know, really makes full enjoyment out of his subscription, I was like, man, if I was a young, young fella and could get my hands on a free subscription, there's nothing I wouldn't do <laughs> to <laughs> make that happen. You, you couldn't have a better opportunity than these live streams, that's for sure. Well, and we're gonna we're gonna have a peruse of your work as well, mm -hmm. um, so that'll be nice. Uh, so let's have a look at this path. Something yeah, funny is going on here. So I'm kind of elongating it into this little orb. Um, it does kind of a weird thing here, which I think happens sometimes. Um, because it sometimes gets confused about what it wants to do. Uh, but you just have to make sure that you, you're setting your first vertex and it's kind of main, you have to sometimes just remind it. You know, I'm gonna remind you who the first vertex you is. You stay in line. That's right. I'm the, I'm the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> like, after Effects, look at me. Look at me after Effects. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> okay, captain. That's right. Um, so we might want to stretch this. Uh, Thank you, Hector. Hector is enjoying us. Good. <laughs> hey, someone. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not making him very productive, though. <laughs> no. I don't. But we're entertaining. I've never been accused of making Apparently. anybody productive. <laughs> <laughs> so once this thing impacts the cracker, yes, it seems like all the speed is going out of it, right? Mm -hmm. So it still needs to be blobulous here. The speed shouldn't be going away yet. In fact, it should be increasing in speed, increasing its its sort of tail as it comes in. Right up until and the then moment of impact, right? Here's the impact. At the impact moment, it still needs to have some of that tail mm. coming off of it, but this needs to start to drag. This needs to start to uh, uh, take on a different, different shape, a different attitude. Um, it needs to be kind of like a rolling wave, if you think about it, because when a liquid, especially a sticky liquid, hits something, the first part hits and is pulled under. It starts to roll as mm -hmm. it goes, right? <laughs> right. Like it's like a like a snowball. It's like tumble, yeah, tumble, yeah. tumble. So we kind of want to have that motion happening here, that it kind of has this this wave that's coming off this side of it. At the same time, you don't want to get off model. So this is something that. Uh, animators say a lot when something is off model. So think about in our terms, the model isn't very, um, very interesting, right? Like it's, there's not a lot of stuff going on in it. But if the volume of cream cheese changes dramatically from here to here, which as you can see, it is doing, you know, we need to kind of repair that um, and maintain the volume. That's right. The volume of the thing needs to be consistent. Um, and now this needs to kind of maintain its kind of smushing down, and let's just let's just put it into its sort of final yeah. resting place, and then we'll try to massage the middle parts to get it there. All right, so so that's uh, uh, not quite, eh? So, but it's close, right? It's pretty close. It could even be happening a little bit faster, even. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Sound effects help. Yeah. Well, Always. Now, yeah, like, you, you guys might think we're joking, but uh, sound design really impacts the experience of the motion, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, that's definitely something to, to think about. And if I can actually plug, our, our friend Matt from Mount Mograph has recently made an extension for After Effects that's fantastic, and Premiere, that is fantastic. For sound design, it has a... Um, a pretty big library of sound effects. Hmm. They're already working on new features to be able to import your own sound effects. It's completely affordable and you are uh, granted lifetime access to all future updates, all future sound packs. Mm. Uh, but it, I've used it in After Effects and it's just fantastic for uh, what we are just talking about, kind of feeling out what the sound design can be and how you can use that with your animation to, to have those two work together mm -hmm. nicely. And, and oh, it's yeah. called Boombox. Boom I, never, I never even said yeah, it. It's called Boombox. The important Go part of a plug is when Mount you Mount Mograph. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's, here's what we've kind of massaged this thing into. And, you know, it's not so bad, eh? It's kind of, we're getting the idea yeah. that it's yep. a wee, completely different substance than the cracker. Yeah, we know that because they're behaving differently. Right. One bounces, the other smushes. Mm -hmm. So smushes, glorps, etc. Then we got a pickle coming down. We got to drop that pickle. Pickle, pickle Rick. Yeah, <laughs> pickle Rick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
the the bleakness of that program just <laughs> helps me remain fairly depressive. <laughs> like it's, you know, that yeah, it's it, that's a rough that's a rough program sometimes. But I don't want to I don't want to go too far because I don't want to also uh, not do some of the texture that's important. So the pickle's gonna be pretty quick. Right. Let's do a very quick pickle um, and. A happy little pickle. <laughs> just, you know, if in your composition, a happy little pickle just lives right over there, you just go ahead and you you put that pickle into your own composition, you know. And maybe in my my composition, it lives over here, you know. Could be. You know what? Actually, Bob Ross didn't say you know a lot. That's one of the things I, I really uh, enjoy about him that he didn't have a lot of filler words yeah. in his speaking. I'm a big Bob Ross fan. I don't I don't need to hide it. You know. He's, uh, Why would you? Sometimes when I'm having a stressful day, yeah, I put on. It's Bob, on Netflix now, isn't it? It's on Netflix. I believe it is. It's on YouTube as well. Oh. I think. Um, I think there is a Bob Ross official that you can check out. Um, so we're gonna say this is gonna be the pickle. Uh, oh yeah, and did I want to scale down the pickle? There we are. So this is the pickle, um, and I think that the pickle can just kind of come in and impact uh, mm -hmm. with impact this thing. Pickles over. are pretty rigid, right? Generally, they're not too floored. If you, <laughs> you should send it back, if that happens, you should send it back. <laughs> uh, so again. Since our, our director said we should have something come in from this side, well, then I should have the pickle come in from the other side, um, just just so that Balance it it's out. coming in from the left, it's coming in from the right, you know. Pickles to the left of me, pickles to the right. It's uh, perfect. So it's coming in. That needs to be way, way faster. Um, and something that it should also be doing is impacting um, the cream cheese when it hits. So it shouldn't hit over there, it should hit here. And if it's going to be rotating as it comes in, and then it's going to just kind of rotate itself to kind of a skidding stop. And then oh, these position keyframes, uh, their keyframe interpretation should be Bessier, okey doke. Ooh, it's still scooping. It's still scooping. <laughs> uh, we're going to get the. Uh, there we go. Oh, yes. Spatial linear, please. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> So it hits, and then, mm, that's not really doing it, eh? Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, this guy needs the same kind of treatment. Needs to be slowing, slowing, slowing. Easing into that final position. It's losing all its momentum. Yeah, and I don't think it's losing its momentum fast enough, actually. It needs to burn, there we go. And then it's Ash settled. brings up a good point. The cream cheese might need to slide a little bit to the other side, get spread out a little bit more with this impact. That's right, so. You're already ahead of me, Ash. You know it. That as this thing comes in and impacts, well, then the cream cheese should be shifting to accommodate. Um, and so we can just grab the point and squish it a little bit, adjust the curve a little bit, push it in these directions. Um, so it's. There it is. Beautiful. Just like that. Um, so let's put some texture on these things. Okay. I, don't, I don't want us to, to miss the texture part. Sure. I know grainy, grainy gradients are so hot right now. So um, hot. I want to show you uh, one of my techniques to make that happen. Um, and one of the ones that I like to do is just a stack of effects on here that'll generate the gradient. Okay. So the first thing we do is we need there to be gradient information on the layer. So you could achieve this by putting a gradient uh, on you know, just a gradient fill of mm -hmm. some kind. And so in our case, let's say the light source is over here, and so this part of the baguette is in shadow. So we're, we're defining our, our shadow situation. The light source. Exactly. What's in shadow, what's in light, what has, what contours are important, that kind right. of thing. Uh, the next thing that I like to do is I like to drop on a uh, posterize. So we, we throw a posterize on here and we take this down to three levels. So giving us one, two, three levels a shadow, a highlight, a midtone, a thumbs up. All right. Um, and so now you might want to start adjusting where this is for how much the highlight, how much the uh, how much the shadow, how much the midtone, where is that? All right. So we got our posterize. Because we want to end up with three colors in the end, only three. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to put in. Uh, some noise, some noise, HLS, mm -hmm. hue, lightness, saturation. I put it 
above the posterized. So this is happening and then it's posterizing. And you see now, Real gritty that way. now it's breaking it up, right? Yeah. And it could be more or less. Like if you want defined bands, mm -hmm. you could have more, you could have less, and less, more, blah, blah, blah. I might, I might mush them together just so both edges of the stuff sort of uh, touch each other. And then we've got the posterized going on. And then that seldom used effect that you used uh, yesterday, tritone, the thing no one touches, tritone. Yes. Because we only have three colors, we've said only three, one highlight, one mid, one uh, shadow, we are now able to independently control each of them. So, it's like choosing a fill for each one of those three. Exactly, exactly. And so what we can start doing is say, all right, maybe the shadow is totally black, oh, totally black is not good, but dark, it should be dark, dark, dark. Um, you know, the darker color here. And we could even hue shift it if we desire, right? We could hue shift it, uh, maybe make it a little bit yellower, make it a little bit more saturated, that could be good. And then on the highlight end, the highlight should be less saturated, brighter, brighter, contrasting the brightness. And there we go, boop, greeny gradient. There you go. Nailed it. Um, three effects. That's right, three effects makes it happen. Um, now, here's a little downside when we to this sort of method. As this moves, you notice the gradient doesn't move with it. It's not great, but I don't mind that myself. Like, I personally am not super chaffed about that. It looks uh, like. Yeah, and if you want this to be stable, you could apply this kind of thing to a different layer, right? And like a different mm -hmm. uh, sort of composition. So I can make a composition and call this, I don't know, bread texture if I want. Um, mm -hmm. And then in the bread texture, I could make a big one of these, a big leg of this, and then just paste those things in here. Now I've got my bread texture in here. I would just take my bread texture and I would just parent it uh, to the bread, bread. And if we are only looking at that, and the bread texture, you notice the bread texture certainly is moving with the thing. Oh no, it's, I stuck it on the cream cheese. Oopsie doodle. <laughs> That's why you gotta label things correctly. This is the bread. So bread texture goes on the bread, so now it's always moving with the bread, right? So that, that's something you could do. And if you want one to only uh, sort of look at the other, what you do is you say, hey, bread texture, alpha mat of that thing. And then you're good to go. So you can reposition. Exactly, and you can put this wherever you like. And this is sort of how you might work with any kind of texture, really, to make that happen. Um, you'd, you'd be doing a combination of parenting, matting, and that right. kind of thing. And, and Jordan asks, couldn't you just make the bread its own comp altogether and keep the animation? Yes. Yeah, there, absolutely. There, Texturing is one of those things that there are so many ways of doing it. Uh, oh yes, doing them, and sometimes the best way is the the way that you did it. Mm -hmm. As if it works, then it works. <laughs> if it works, move on. Keep doing it, especially because this this scenario we're kind of talking about being a fast paced mm -hmm. thing. We're trying to get this animation done so that it can go up. It's a social media um, event, so yeah. the, sometimes. I mean, obviously, learning efficiencies <laughs> makes you a better motion designer and will make these kinds of things quicker, but sometimes, uh, you know, you just gotta grit your teeth and, and, yeah. and put your nose to the grind. Yeah, I mean, make exactly. it happen however however it works. <laughs> yeah, and it, you know, it's, uh, you know, that's, that's what we call putting in the work, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just doing the, the pickle portion now. Um, now with the pickle, it needs a gradient on it as well, right? And but what I'm going to do is we can use an effect to put a gradient on gradient. So we could have the gradient ramp out here, and we could have that gradient ramp be not a linear one, but a radial one. Mm -hmm. And this radial ramp, where's the other end of it? Here we are. Is now sort of it's like the it's like the light is being cast from the origin here yeah. out. So now it's it's more like the pickle is being thrown into the light as it as it comes in. Blurp, like that. Something else that you'll probably want to do to these things is have a, a rougher edge around the outside, right? So what you can do with that is use the roughen edges. Ooh. Drop a roughen edges that does exactly... Hey, <laughs> we got a pickle, guys. It does what it says on the <laughs> tin! <laughs> um, so you could use this to 
mess up the edges of this thing yeah. and make it make it pickly, right? You could definitely yeah. do that. I could use it on. I could use it, however, to make the edges uh, that grainy kind of gradient look, right? I could use that by scaling down the fractal influence. Oh, we got a hairy pickle. Yeah, no. It's <laughs> you know what? I felt bad when people suggested it, and now I feel bad now. So, <laughs> so you'll notice that what we end up with is this kind of. Uh, graininess around the mm -hmm. outside, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what we want to do is kind of sharpen that. You can increase that edge sharpness to make that happen. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And now you've got this kind of grainy outside because it's using a fractal to make that happen. The same, th the same thing that powers fractal noise is also powering this. Um, and that's how it. That's how we could make that happen. Um, it's all still based on a vector shape layer. It is. Which is yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, so we could then, so imagine, you know, we could take everything we've done to the bread, everything we've done to the pickle layer, and we could apply it to the cheese layer. We could do the exact same thing to the cheese layer. So we copy these and we just drop it on the old cheese, just like this. Now it's green, so we need to change the colors, right? So these are all going to be sort of muted, gross cheese colors. <laughs> I love cheeses. I love many kinds of cheeses. Cream cheese is not one of them, guys. All the hard cheeses in the world, you gotta, gotta get out there. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta stop eating that processed stuff, man. <laughs> that being said, blue cheese goes through a process. It's a crazy process, but it goes through it. But yeah. Just like motion design. Mm -hmm. Now you notice that a lot of these effects are now really grinding it up out here. Um, so when we look at... Whoop, whoop, very nice. Yeah, so it's kind of blorp. Um, and you might want to like maybe put a little lump of cheese uh, covering up this part of the pickle, right? We call that add some depth. You know? Yeah. Uh, how would we make that happen? The best move might be to just add. I just duplicate the cheese layer, strip out everything from it, and this alter the path a little bit here. So the pickle here. That will it will be happening here, so the layer really only needs to start there, and the path is going to be mm -hmm, kind of like this, mm -hmm. just to cover up a little bit of the pickle. There. Yeah, so that we know that, and it will it should go with the pickle as it moves because it is a creamy substance, um, and it should be kind of a wave, I think. So maybe the waviness looks kind of like this. Mm -hmm. There we go. So it's kind of pushing the wave, it impacts the wave here, and goes like that. Very nice little detail. Yeah. It adds a lot. Yeah, it, it's 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 a little layer, but, you know, it's doing a bit of lifting for us. Um, I just need to bump that out, just so it's not covering up our rigid, rigid cracker. There we go. So let's play that back. Kind of pushes out like that. Less yeah. than two minutes for the challenge submission. Oh, man. Exactly. I hope you're uploading. Are we uh, do, do a bunch of submissions there? You get the list. Let's see. I'll take a look. Oh yes, we definitely got submissions. Beauty. That's what this I will be a good review session. But yeah. So yeah, that's how we would have things kind of impact and slide. Uh, let's make the let's make the bread kind of rough around the edges too. Let's do that. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Boom. Bread is now rough around the edges. Wonderful. Wonderful. There we go. Cream cheese plus pickle. That's pretty good. I think there was also uh, talk of a tomato. Um, a, a tomato coming in here and then shooting with the toothpick. So tomato, pop, 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 and then we skewer it onto this thing. So what I might want to do is start with the toothpick and then interrupt it with the tomato because the toothpick's going to be the constant and the other one is going to be uh, the interrupted. So toothpicks are perfectly nice rectangular objects. We could just make one of those. Uh, da, da, da. So then we have a nice, sort of thin, toothpicky looking thing. Here we are. Just like that. It's got a gradient on it already. Loving that. And how long should it be? Maybe like that. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then I'm going to move its anchor point uh, down to the bottom of it. And then we're just going to skewer this in. It can probably come in. Uh, right around, that's coming to rest, so sh really shoot in right around here. So kind of position, rotation, uh, let's rotate her like this, just like in our previous composition. So we're going to put it up like this, 
and you don't always have to have things start outside the frame. That's something I'll say, is that uh, the thing is, sometimes you want to have things start outside the frame, but the first time you see it, it's in frame already, and that's going to be the same if you start it outside the frame or not. So it really doesn't matter a whole lot if you start it outside the frame or not. Uh, so it's going to come in. Let me just check the speed on this. No, that should be faster. Faster still, maybe. So it's going to come down. It's going to impact. So let's let's back it off to where it impacts, like here, because then it should slow down as it meets resistance going through things. I think that's probably a good move. That, that's probably too much resistance, but you know, it's only a few keyframes, so. There we go, so this skewer is coming in. We could take the time to go ahead and maybe we just give it the same kind of uh, texture as the bread. It'll probably go just behind everything because it appears to be going through things. Just like that. And I think when it lands, when it lands, comes to an abrupt stop. We got our position. Yeah, when it lands. Do, 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 do. Oh no, I'm still looking at the cheese layer. Two labels. Labels, people. Labels. My producer's getting on me about the <laughs> labels. As he should. As everyone should. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have it rotate a little bit. F9, rotate a little bit. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Just so that it kind of comes in and rotates a bit. So that kind of rotates a little bit. Because what I want it to do is come in, rotate, and maybe move the pickle as it because it's going to carry it with it, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's one way I could do it. If I were to parent the pickle to it now, that would be not a good move, because then the, the pickle would be parented to a thing that's right. like flying in, right? So this is a good chance to, again, use a null object to come in and control this situation. Um, so we go, uh, we go layer, new, null object. That's one way to get a null object. You could use the keyframes out there instead. And I'm going to put the null object uh, sort of down here where the where the rotation of this thing is going to happen. So it's doo -doo -doo. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. Mm -hmm. Kind of holding down uh, holding down command so it snaps to things. Uh, and this is where the rotating begins. So the rotating will begin, and the toothpick and the pickle are both now parented to the null, which does nothing until the time it's needed. At which point. It will rotate ever so slightly. Pop. Boop, 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 boop. Like this. And then, little F9. There we are. There's F9 on the keyboard. Now, zoom back out. There we go. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's subtle, you know? It's got some subtleties to it. People say I'm not a very subtle guy, <laughs> but now we know better. At least when it comes to animating. Otherwise, I'm... there we go. Cool. So yeah, we've got this coming in. What you might want to do, and you know, you don't have to say that, you know, maybe you want to say like, well, let's make this look more handy, hand done. You know, like it's been done right. more by hand. Well, we would, a good way to kind of cheat that is to put an adjustment layer and posterize the time. Mm. For those who don't have the time to animate everything by hand. This is a good way to kind of do it. Um, well, which is funny because we're taking away using yeah. the posterized time effect. We're taking away part of what we've already generated. I know, but as you can see, this kind of gives you like that kind of choppier. <laughs> it's so fun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're only doing like half the frames. Yeah. Right. It gives it a very distinct feel. Yeah. It's like oh, it's so fun. It's so handmade. You know, and it, right. co it covers up some of the crimes that you did earlier, right? <laughs> sure. Now, whether you want to do that or not is up to you. Really, if you were animating that way, you'd be, what we'd say, like animating on the twos. You'd be animating yes. every other frame. Mm -hmm. And really, really, that's, there's 65 frames, 64 frames in this. That's 32 pictures that you would have to animate. So, you know, you could just draw 32 pictures. You want like smooth? our friend Pablo. That's Boris. right. Yeah, yeah. So if you were watching him, you're like, man, he's, do he's doing so much work. I wish I was doing less work. Well, this is a way you can do less work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, Pablo is a craftsman, and I am a kind of rat man who uh, 
<laughs> is uh, it's kind of the, the big difference, I think. So yeah, that's how we would skewer the things with the toothpick to have that come in and and hit things. Um, and so uh, yeah, I think we'll what are we gonna Great. do? We're gonna review some yeah, contest submissions. Yeah, why don't we take a look at these these contest submissions? I think we've got about seven of them. Ooh. So More here we yesterday. are. We're swapped over to my screen. This is the first one. It's from Ty. Now, if I remember right, the challenge was to take a, tra a transition motion graphics template and apply it to some footage that we provided you. So let's see what Ty did. Mm -hmm. So we've got the footage. And there's the transition, very nice. So I'm gonna back it up just a little bit so we can see that one more time. Mm -hmm. Nice honeycomb transition. Very nice. All right, there's Ty. Next we have, hi. Okay. Same. Same footage. Wait for that transition. Ooh. Nice little, nice little addition there. I like the Adobe branding incorporated. There's our faces. <laughs> and next up, we have Ryan. Oh, it looks like there's also a late one that's come in. Oh, in yes. Oh, very nice. Ooh. A little <laughs> bit of a matrix, matrixy vibe. Squares. I like the color choice there. Mm -hmm. and we have another one from, I don't, I will find the, the name, but uh, this username here. <laughs> very nice. Little, oh, little that's title sequence that's right. for this someone's, submission. Someone's titling it. Tell them what you're gonna do, then you do it. Oh, I like the, the color uh, shifting that we got on the footage there, the treatment we have. Mm. Very nice. All right, next we have Bradley. It's interesting, because I never know when the transition's gonna come. Yeah, it's always a surprise. Yeah. Is it now, is it now? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Very nice. Motion blur is always fun. Uh, this one is from Yanina. I like hexagonal patterns. I wish my wallpaper at home was like, Whoa! Wow, now that's fun. <laughs> Very nice. So, okay, so this is transition in, and then we just hard cut to the footage, but I like the motion. Mm. That, was, that was nice. Oh, and then a UFC conference yeah, call. Yeah. That's coming. <laughs> Why does YouTube think we want to see that after this? <laughs> Here we've got herbs. All right. Submission, recap. Ooh. Pew, 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 Very pew. nice. Rotating squares. Interesting, interesting. So it's more of a transition into the segment. Mm -hmm. And then we have another transition. Between. Double transition. All right. <laughs> Good effort. Pew, pew, double transition. And I think we have one more submission that I can pull up if I uh, That's get true. the link. Yeah. Let me hop over here. And, oh, actually. I, I think I did cover them all. Am I right on that? Yep, we're good. Okay, so those are our submissions. Okay. Uh, Evan, what so, do you think? That's do true. We scrub through them one more time quickly? Or? Yeah, we're going okay. to have to go through them one more time. So here's our first submission. Okay. So nice, fast paced transition. Okay. That's Ty. Oh, wait, I could watch on that screen. Why am I leaning over to your <laughs> screen? <laughs> this one has a nice little. Uh, like indicator that we're about to have the transition. I really like the color palettes of this mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have Ryan. Just go, just go full screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that one's the, the like a square, almost. Mm -hmm. uh, I called it the matrix look. I like that pattern coming down. This one was interesting because the footage tints mm -hmm. to match the transition. And I, I like that a lot of people have chosen to use uh, colors that are found in either the before or after shot to like harmonize right. between the two of them. Um, yeah, we were uh, we were talking about that last night. We were down by the bridge, you know, cutting, harmonizing cuts, having elements that cut between right. things. That beautiful video. Um, we're at Valentina B. <laughs> yeah, her her excellent work when she was in uh, Dubai and uh, was it Paris? Paris, yeah. yeah. It was, 
but it's a genius editor. She is just a lot of thought goes into her sequences. Yeah. All right, and here's the last submission again. This one is a lot of fun too. There's all these rotating squares. Mm hmm. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do you think, Evan? I, I really like highs. I really like uh, from uh, high and wind. This one right here. Uh, yeah, it's got the little yeah. little box that comes out. I like the idea of telling people what's about to happen. Like I like kind of like that motion graphics tell you something because like look, your eye goes right to it. And then your eye goes right to the middle, and then it expands from there. So it, I think that's a good use of, of the stuff. Well done. I agree. So hi, congratulations. <laughs> you are our winner. You're our winner. you are going to be getting a year of Creative Putt subscription. Again, a fabulous prize. You will get a lot of, of use out of that. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. Good yeah. work. Thank you, everyone, for participating and making those submissions. Uh, you did that very quickly. I'm mm -hmm. very impressed that we had so many submissions. Great job. Like, it's really like someone coming around and installing a garage of tools onto your house when you, when you get a creative cloud. Like, oh, well, I wonder what I've got. Oh, 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 my room is full of stuff. <laughs> you know, like, it, it's, it's amazing. You could, anything that's in your imagination could just flow out of it with this stuff. It's pronounced uh, he, sorry. It's oh, it's he. 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 <laughs> oh yeah, that makes sense. Because I didn't press the rest of the name. But he. <laughs> Leave it to me. Okay, that's but true. It, <laughs> I'll take the blame on that one. Well, but uh, yes. I followed you blindly down the name hole, and that's where we are. <laughs> Not, no more holes. Okay. We're done with holes on this, <laughs> this stream. <laughs> All right. Cool. So yeah, we still got some time yeah, left today. We got like forty, about ten minutes. Or ten minutes left. Um, Fifteen. Fifteen minutes. Thank you, Paco. Beauty. So uh, from twelve. You know, from 12. So <laughs> where would you take the? Now that we have the, the basic animation coming in, you were talking about doing maybe a tile. Yeah, I'm talking about tiling this stuff. Um, and so what we can do to tile things? Let's say we were to make a composition and uh, let's call it uh, tiling uh, of the things. You know, and this is going to be in the size of our export of okay. what we're going to actually export this. So, you know, if this is going on a 1920 by 1080 kind of ratio, if this is going on a square kind of ratio, that's where you got to you got to make that choice right here. So mm -hmm. let's see what happens when we put on a 1920 by 1080 ratio. So what we need is the assembly of the pickle. So we'll just find the thing that I called assembly. Looking hard. Mm, I probably put it into this caviar folder when we were going to do caviar and then our, our lives got flipped, turned upside down. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use, uh, I, I like the motion tile, some mm -hmm. people like the repetile, um, but you know, I like the motion tile really. Um, the motion tile personally is pretty nice. So what I'm going to do is scale this down and then we're going to increase the output width, right? So I'm scaling this down. Scaling the individual down, scale it down to like 25, right? And then increasing that output width so that the output of this thing, um, let's just say the output width should be 1920 by 1080. That's to be the maximum bounds we would ever need this to be. This thing's gonna click and grind for a little while because uh, we are actually rendering duplicates of all the stuff. So then you'd probably want to call this back and say, well, it doesn't need to be that big. You know, like you'd right. stop rendering the things I can't even see. You know, you, you want to kind of remove as much as you can if you can get away with it. Um, so then we'll kind of look at the tile pattern here. We'll see when it's completed. To be honest, I'm very spoiled for hardware uh, back in my office <laughs> sometimes. Um, as we can see sort of the size of this stuff, now that it's in a tile, what would happen if we were to scale this down? If we scale this layer, the whole thing is going down, right? The grid. What if I just, if I'm happy with the grid and I just want to scale the individual parts, right? I just want each little thing to be a little, a little smaller. Well, we could drop a transform on that happens before the motion tile. So then we are able to, um, are we, yeah, we're adaptive, all right. So we could start scaling this down as well uh, if we want. So if we do, <laughs> so then you notice each of the individual components right. has shrunk. So when I was thinking about doing this tiling, I was thinking of like like patterned shirts that, that we see a lot of cool cool young folks wear uh, that have these like little intricate little patterns on them. 
whether they be poop emojis or, you know, little pineapples or something. That was the idea behind this kind of a look. Okay. Um, which is pretty fun sometimes. Um, so yeah, we end up with this, uh, this little grid of things. And then we can offset the grid a little bit, um, which uh, we would do by phasing it a little bit. So we just phase it up, 180 degree phase. Give it a little twist, just like that. Very nice. so then we got, then we got the tile going, and I'm just gonna hit render here, and I'm just gonna think really hard while it uh, while it renders. I, and I mean, the reason it's taking so long is because your source tile is actually a 1080 by 1080 comp, so there is Correct. a lot of detail in there. Yeah, which, uh, going back to your original uh, animation, you you wanted that resolution. You yeah. wanted it to be that size to start with. Yeah, and the reason I like that is because when you shrink down the grainy gradient, it looks in my opinion, a lot better mm. when you shrink it down this much. Um, really, we could have made the the whole thing, like uh, the whole assembly comp, we could have done this whole thing at a at a 540. We could have done this whole right. thing at a 200. Um, it's just a lot more comfortable for me to work at. Um, and if we want to start introducing, if we were to like put those bumps on the gherkin, we wouldn't really see them if they're all like one pixel, right? Right. Because we're putting on effects that force this to be rasterized. Mm -hmm and we're not able to fully enjoy, we couldn't hit the collapse transformation button on this one and really, really fully enjoy it. Yeah, because it <laughs> would not like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we end up, we end up with this uh, kind of deal here uh, when things come on. Uh, but in our last moments here, I would like to go back to uh, the, ex the example that I, that I brought with me to kind of show you the sort of whole project as it would assemble together um, when we've got a title on top of it, when we're showing the individual part and then we're showing the whole thing, right? Um, and that, that kind of, the way you would structure a project to show from one and then many, that we're communicating the story of how we are making this stuff in this short intro. Mm. You'd make one thing, you'd make many things, all it's missing is like a thousand hands coming up and grabbing all the things. <laughs> That's the only step we're missing. Um, and we don't do that because just as some people, this continues on in the in the chat as discussion of a fear of holes, uh, the visual of a thousand hands grabbing a thousand tiny hors d'oeuvres is horrifying. <laughs> and <laughs> I would not want that to be part of, part of this aesthetic. Um, but uh, some folks might like if it were if it were like a manageable number and the hands didn't didn't seem weird. You could have like a bunch of them just come and start mm -hmm. grabbing. So that now we can see like <laughs> they're just coming and grabbing things very quickly. Yeah, that would work as well. Um, and you could do them in a similar style. Exactly, and and really uh, the idea that if you just had a thousand of them at once, that would be very creepy. But if you just had them individually, like take one, take one, take one, you know, that would be. Pretty nice, or even because it's really the difference in things that makes them stand out. If one hand came out and took one thing, that would be your eye would be drawn to that one thing right. doing the one thing. So that would be probably the the move to just have beep, come in and take one away. Uh, that would be a, a nice little addition. Of course, I strictly didn't want to do any hands because I don't want to show people uh, how the hamburger gets made on that <laughs> one. It would be me staring at my own hand, be like. Uh, it is hard. Uh. <laughs> That's I'm, you know, if you've ever had to try and do a hand, it's one of the hardest things to, to make look right. Here's something that I will say though, when just like we made that choice at the beginning, right? We made all those choices about what is and isn't important, what geometry, what paths are and are not important to bring with us, right? Um, so if we were to say we want to make a hand, you know, what kind of hand would we make? We can think back to what kind of functionality does the hand need to have, right? right? What are the fewest moving parts we can get away with? And in, in some instances, that would mean that the fewest moving parts that we could possibly do uh, is something like we would have a finger, that would be one, one finger, like this, and then we would have a, a more different finger that would be coming and completing the pinching action as well. So it would be that. Kind of like a claw. Yeah, that would be like my thumb maybe. Maybe that's, and the thumb is of course, uh, the thumb is a, um, a thicker uh, and shorter um, digit 
uh, that connects in a very different way to your rest of your hand. If anyone's suffered a hand injury, then you probably know what I'm going on about. You have so many bones in your hand. You have so many. Um, I've had I've had a few uh, sort of hand injuries in my life, um, and just you look at the X-ray, and there's just like this is a, this is a bone, this is a bone over here. They're connected by a series of yeah. muscles. This part in here is a mess of bones. So when a hand is flexing around, this bone is moving independently of this bone, but they're stuck together, and it's like it's very ugh, complex. so gross. Um, so when you end up rigging an entire hand, you end up rigging those things, right? Right. Um, but in our instance here, what we're able to do is we can start to say, all right, what are the essential components of this hand? How do we say that this is a hand? How do we know that, you know, this is a thumb over here? Well, maybe it needs a little thumbnail, you know? That's how you know it's a thumb, it's got a thumbnail. All right. Um, so there we go. And how do you know that this is a finger? And how do you know the finger is looking in a, in a different direction? Well, it's got a little fingernail on it, eh? There's its fingernail right there. Boom. So we know that this is a finger tilted in this direction. That's go. a thumb tilted in that direction. Basic uh, geometry. Yeah. And, it, you know, taking it down to, to the simplest of things. And then we would say, well, we also need the rest of the hand. Where's that at? You know, tell, tell me about the rest of that hand. And if we want it to stand out, if we want this to be sort of uh, either the foreground elements of a hand, the background elements of a hand, you know, we would probably put this little span that goes across here uh, very neatly. Oops, there we go. So we get this going across. Doop, doop, doop. And really, you can think about, well, how much of the hand are we actually going to see that's going to go up? Kind of like that. So we kind of forget about a lot of the rest of it. But, right. But it should be... It's like a big V. Yeah. No, see, I'm doing it again. I'm staring at... <laughs> I told you it happened, it happened. Yeah. You know, it's, well, you have you have the reference right in front of you, so exactly. why not use yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Some people get those like wooden hand things for their desk, oh, yeah. which I think are pretty nice. And so that's this part, and then we also need what's in the back of the, the rest of your fingers. You need the rest of your fingers back there. Don't forget about them. Don't forget about those other fingers. You know, those are, they are important. They do something. People are requesting that we give two more hours. Are you up for that? <laughs> if the good people at Adobe uh, can keep the stream going and I can get some agua, then... That, uh, that I will bring up the point that this is day two of three. We will be back tomorrow, and tomorrow will be pretty interesting because we're going to be tag teaming. Oh, yeah. Uh, both doing a different aspect of the same project. So that's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. You should ch check that out. We're also still going to have Valentina V in the morning yep. uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We're going to have Pablo Lozano at uh, 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then we will be back at 1 p.m. And I, I have tuned into both the other streams this morning. They are fantastic. You should be checking them out. If you can't tune in live again, these are all going to live on the Adobe Creative Cloud YouTube channel. And definitely check out the replays. Mm -hmm. So here you go. Here's the basic stuff that could define a hand. We got that going down. Totally identifiable. Yeah, I know that's a hand. You know that's a hand. We know. We <laughs> that's what's up. It's going to be moving fairly quickly, so we won't have to worry about it. And really, if you want to just drop in a couple extra fingers to say, like, oh, well, maybe just another finger, just one more made, made of tubes, maybe that's <laughs> fine. You know, you'd have it like this. Oh, look at that. Things are looking up already. So... We haven't really done a lot with it, and we could definitely stand to refine it a lot more, but, right. um, oh, you know what, also the colors are totally backwards. In my, <laughs> in my rush to make this happen, I really beefed it on that Well, one. that's fine, because, you're, again, you're using Illustrator as your, your tool to come up with the form. Exactly. exactly. And you're going to be transferring it to After Effects anyway. It, uh, again, it's a process. It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, there we go. So yeah, now we've got the lightest things in the foreground, the darkest things in the background. So that's a good way to sort of differentiate between the, uh, <coughs> the objects. All right, I think we are in the final moments of our stream. Just want to say that uh, obviously most people probably already know Evan, but if you're not familiar, check out his YouTube channel, uh, EC Abrams, mm -hmm. and we will be back tomorrow. This has been a fantastic stream. Thank you again all for your amazing work. The the, the submissions were fantastic. Mm -hmm. you did an amazing job. And yeah, just continue to, to tune in tomorrow. We're going to have a lot more exciting things. More happening. challenges, more giveaways, more titles. Jake and Evan break up the steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. Yeah. This, is, this has been great. And uh, yeah, thank you, Evan. Thank you very much, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>